Welcome to the Electricity of Life, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Thinking and feeling scientifically is a practice of loosening our grip on a favorite theory and allowing ourselves to hold multiple theories in our awareness. So many humans get swept up in enthusiastic reductionism, espousing one idea that they feel must be so important that it deserves to eclipse all other factors. In the mid-20th century, Belarusian scientist Alexander Chizevsky was in a position to potentially become the USSR's first winner of the Nobel Prize. Then, tragically, Stalin had him thrown in a gulag. His scientific findings conflicted with the empire's convictions that it was their economic philosophy alone that propelled their revolution. Whereas Alexander had essentially shown that cosmic ecology also seemed to play a role. Chizevsky had conducted an extensive analysis comparing historical data of human societal events to data of earth-affecting solar events. This research began with his dissertation in 1918 and continued throughout his publications. Prominent cultural events were evaluated using a mass excitability index, and their timing mirrored that of the peaks and valleys in strength among earth landing, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. Contrary to the hostile reductionism expressed by Stalin, as author George M. Young wrote in the Huffington Post, Chizevsky, of course, had never argued that periodic bursts of solar energy were the sole or even prime cause of human events, just that they were an important contributing factor and could trigger actions that had been building up from a variety of other causes. Despite political and or practical boundaries, to dissemination of this work in the global academia. Some scientists have studied such fascinating correlations into the present day. Professor Zoitber Ertel in Germany examined Alexander's methods in 1996. He expressed some disagreement towards the historical archiving used in Russia at the time, and some skepticism of the timing observed. But in his own replication, using contemporary data, the effect remained. He is far from the only scientist to look into these effects, but let's get into some of the biology. Understanding how such an effect could occur is also a process of better understanding our daily environment. The mostly nitrogen atmosphere we breathe is an unseen but practically felt element that pervades our existence. But elements of our world that are not even felt prove a greater challenge for us to appreciate. As discussed in a previous episode mentioning loggerhead turtles, these organisms appear to instinctually feel the angle of the Earth's magnetic field, navigating and building their nest in accordance with its shifting tide. Coronal mass ejections, solar flares, and the solar wind in general bathe the Earth's magnetosphere in space. This influences currents of charge in the ionosphere, the expanse of electrons and charged atoms encircling the planet. Those currents, in turn, perturb the magnetic field within Earth's atmosphere, shifting it about and causing ripples of sorts. Ultra-low frequency magnetic micropulsations propagate in this medium around us. They are also called alphan waves. In a past Thunder blog, I mentioned a study where electrophysiologist Robert Becker and psychologist Howard Friedman cataloged an increased schizophrenia admittance rate during geomagnetic storms. These days, the magnetic field of the human brain can be imaged using MEG. While our skull may serve as a robust defense against some influences, it does not block out the geomagnetic field, and thus the gentle magnetic fields of our brain, our biomagnetism, exists in some relationship with it. Excitation of this invisible medium all around us is intimately felt by the human body. Arterial blood pressure is typically increased during geomagnetic storms, and apparently human populations may experience increased adrenaline levels. Fairly recent research by the Russian Academy of Sciences noted that most microvariations in the GMF are accompanied by a 13% higher incidence of heart attacks. In a study of 45 astronauts, they displayed increased blood pressure and heart rate during periods of geomagnetic variation. But meanwhile, a series of studies in America found that heartbeat regulating implants in people with irregular heartbeats needed to administer fewer adjustments 
during geomagnetic excitations. These patients experienced greater cardiac stability. In upcoming episodes, we'll see more discussion of such physiology wherever possible, and of the general relationship between organisms and the planet's magnetic field. Check out links to related information sources in the description, and stay tuned to future episodes of The Electricity of Life.